So let's get straight into our passage this morning. Thank you, Craig, for reading. On Wednesday night, I did mention to you that our Lord Jesus had how many sayings on the cross? If you don't know the answer, it's right there in your bulletin. Seven sayings of Jesus from the cross. And if you look carefully there, please turn up my mic. My mic's going soft. Who's muting me there? eh? Who's muting me? Three of them are found in today's passage. Did you see that? But I would like to focus on just two of them. We are in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 19, and our text is verse 30. But verse tw- look at verse 28. You know, I've, we've been talking about prophecy. It's Palm Sunday, we spoke about the, the prophetic precision of Palm Sunday. But look at verse 28. And after this, after he had spoken to uh, uh, John, after this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Back to prophecy. In fact, John MacArthur, I've got a nice book uh, um, that he wrote, The Gospel According to Jesus. He writes, Throughout the events of the crucifixion, Jesus Christ was on a divine timetable. It's amazing. Those who were plotting to murder him and the Romans and the Jews thought they were on their timetable. But all the time, Jesus was on a divine timetable. And God was sovereignly directing every incident. Step by step, every single detail of Old Testament prophecy was fulfilled, carried out precisely and exactly. You can go through Psalm 22. Go to Genesis 22. Isaiah 53, which we referred to this morning. Leviticus 16. All point to Calvary, believe it or not. J. Vernon McGee says that there are 28 prophecies alone that were fulfilled while Jesus was hanging on that cross. And as he was hanging there, Jesus knew, as the Bible says, all things were now accomplished except one final prophecy. Just look at Psalm 69. Psalm 69. There you go, Ian. Psalm 69. Look at verse 21. I'm sure these guys didn't even know that they were already in the Bible. Listen, Psalm 69, verse 21. Are you there? They gave me also gall for meat, for my meat, and in my thirst they, who's they? (laughs) Soldiers. They gave me vinegar to drink. And what does the Bible say? I thirst. So Jesus, in order that scripture might be fulfilled, says, I am thirsty. The soldiers respond not even knowing that they were under God's sovereign control in fulfilling this prophecy right down to the exact minute detail. And look what verse 29 says. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar. That's not chance. And they filled a sponge. You know, I love that word sponge. You know, when I wash dishes at home, I'm very meticulous. It's, it's like I'm going, into, I'm going into surgery, you know. I stand in front of the seat, in front of the sink. They have made my water, got it ready. And then I say, scalpel. No. Then I say, sponge. Because they wash with cloths. I wash with sponge. And then they say, what is a sponge? It's sponge. There's the word, guys. It's biblical. It's a sponge. See? Your Model C education. I went, to, I went to boarding school. The Bible says there's sponge, man. A sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it into his mouth. Now again, don't miss the significance of the word hyssop. And again, you see God's sovereign control. Why? Turn to Exodus chapter 12. Write it in the margin there. Exodus chapter 12. Where are we in Exodus chapter 12? The Israelites are about to be released from bondage in Egypt. And what was the instruction? Exodus 12. Moses, verse 21 already says, Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And, verse 22, Ye shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, strike the lintel and the two side posts, with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. Why? For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, 
And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, what will happen? The Lord will pass over. And what are we seeing here? Jesus is our Passover lamb on the cross. Listen. Isn't your Bible amazing? Verse 30. There's our text. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. What a profound conclusion. Because the word therefore is a term of conclusion. Three words in English. It is finished. In the Greek, one word. One word. This is easily one of the greatest words Christ ever spoke. Someone has said, never before and never after was there ever spoken any word which contains and means so much. Someone else said, the greatest words ever uttered by the greatest man that ever lived. Another quote, the greatest word from the greatest man on the greatest day in all eternity. Just one word, but no word has, uttered, has ever been uttered that has so changed history and the destiny of mankind. So what is this phrase, it is finished? Three words in English, one word in the Greek, tetelestai. Tetelestai. And remember, Jesus did not say this softly. This was a victory shout. Christ was in pain, I showed you. He was bleeding, he was dehydrated, he was shocked, in shock, close to death. His lips were dry, his throat was parched, and the voice was hoarse. Hence he said, I thirst. But once he received that vinegar, even just the dip on his mouth, his tongue loosened and he let rip with a shout, with a cry, Tetelestai. That's why you'll see in other passages, the Bible says Jesus cried with a loud voice. It was a cry, a pro proclamation of victory, a shout of triumph, where Jesus says, it is finished. Now that can be translated, paid in full. It means to bring to an end. It means to complete, to accomplish. And what Jesus is saying here, mission accomplished. It means this, I did exactly what I sent, set out to do. Or I have accomplished exactly what my father sent me to do. And remember when we did in the Gospel of John, John actually records what our Lord Jesus said. He said, my food is to do the will of him, or my meat is to do the will of him who sent me, and to accomplish his work. And here he says, I've accomplished it. Tetelestai, by the way, was a well-known phrase, a well-known word. For instance, when an artist completed a picture or a writer, a manuscript, they would look at it and say, it is finished, Tetelestai. Servants, when their work was completed, would use the word when they came back to report to their masters. I have completed the work that you assigned to me, Tetelestai. It was also a farmer's word. When one of his herd or flock gave birth to a perfect animal, the farmer would look at that creature with pride and joy and with delight in his eyes would say, Tetelestai, Tetelestai. When a priest examined an animal sacrifice and found it faultless, it was described as Tetelestai. And of course, Jesus died as the perfect Lamb of God, without spot or blemish. Another example, when a merchant or businessman settled an account, settled a debt, he would exclaim or write on the certificate, Tetelestai, the price is paid, paid in full. My brothers and sisters, in the very same way, when Jesus suffered on the cross, when he took upon himself your sin and mine, Jesus fully met the righteous demands of the holy law. God's holy wrath against sin had been satisfied. What's the word? Propitiation. He paid our debt in full. Now remember in the Old Testament, under the Old Testament covenant, many sacrifices, but they never completed the job. They had to come back and over and over do sacrifices because none of the Old Testament sacrifices could take away sin. The blood only covered the sin. But when Jesus died, took away sin. Not just mine, but the sin of the whole world. All that was needed for man's salvation had now been accomplished on the cross. Free from the law, O oh happy condition, Jesus has bled and there is remission. Cursed by the law, bruised by the fall, grace has redeemed us once for all. Once for all, 
O sinner, receive it once for all. O friend, now believe it. Cling to the cross, the burden will fall. Christ has redeemed us once for all. And so when Jesus said, Tetelestai, it is finished, he was saying, your sin debt is fully paid. I have done exactly what I set out to do. And so when we see Tetelestai, it is finished, please, it is not the cry of defeat. It is not the cry of defeat of a dying man. It is the cry of a triumphant, living Savior and Redeemer. That's why I asked to sing that song, Hallelujah, what a Savior. Lifted up was he to die. It is finished was his cry. Now in heaven exalted high. Hallelujah, what a Savior. You see, Tetelestai, a divine proclamation that the work of redemption has been fully, finally, and forever he owed a debt we could never pay. Jesus paid a debt that he did not owe. Paid in full. Paid in full. And remember, once something is paid for in full, you never have to pay for it again. This is not a lay-by. Ne? We have to go every month and pay the lay-by and hope it's still there in the cupboard, in the shelf there somewhere. You never have to pay for it again. And when Jesus died, he died once for all, for all of us. And that sacrifice was sufficient to pay for the sins of every person who has ever lived, past, present, and future. And this is why if you read the Greek and do the tense here, they will tell us that tetelestai is in the perfect tense. Let me tell you what that means. A tense which identifies a past action, it is paid, but with continuing present effects or results. In other words, this happened, tetelestai, paid in full, past action, but the present tense adds the idea, it happened, but it is still in effect today. Which means, tetelestai, it is finished, it was finished in the past, it is finished in the present, and it will remain finished in the future, praise God. It is finished, it stands finished, it will always be finished. And so the death of our Lord Jesus on the cross, although past and complete, it still has ongoing, present, and even permanent effect. Its results will last for eternity. And this is why, theologically, we talk about the three tenses of salvation. We have been saved. We are saved from the penalty of sin, justification. We are being saved every day from the power of sin. That's our sanctification. And one day, praise God, we will be saved from the very presence of sin. And that's our glorification. Paid in full. But the question I want to leave with you. So what is it? What was finished? What is the it that was finished? And let me tell you, this is the biggest it there ever was. I'll give you a few things. Number one, the work of redemption that the Father had given the Son was accomplished. Remember, Jesus is not saying, who I am finished, like we say. The emphasis here is not on the ending of the sufferings. It is the completion of the mission of redemption. It is finished. What, what is the it for? It means sin was atoned for. It means Satan was defeated and rendered powerless, praise God. It means that every requirement of God's law has been satisfied. It means that God's holy wrath against sin has been appeased. And praise God, it means that every single prophecy has been fulfilled. Do you know, from Genesis through to Malachi, there are over 300 specific prophecies dealing with the coming of the Messiah, and these were all fulfilled in Jesus. Go right back from the seed, Genesis 3.15, to the suffering servant of Isaiah 53, to the prediction that John made in his gospel. All this time, all the prophecies of Jesus' life, his ministry and his death, all fulfilled and finished at the cross. John 19, verse 30. Tetelestai, it is finished. Mission accomplished, I, I have done exactly what I set out to do, paid in full. Every task completed, all of God's will accomplished, all Messiah's work done, all prophecy fulfilled, wages of sin paid, ransom paid, redemption secured, God and man reconciled. It is finished. Mission complete. Nothing left to be done. Nothing to be added. Listen carefully. Nothing to be added to what Jesus has already done. 
You can't come back and say, but can I pay? I've already paid the bill in the restaurant. Don't come after the credit card is gone. Now you want to say, ooh, can I just give something? Let me just pay for the tip. No, nothing to be added because Jesus has paid it in full. There was nothing more to do. You know what was the only thing left to do? Jesus just had to die, be buried, and rise again. Hence the term, the finished work on Calvary. The finished work of the cross. The finished work of Christ. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Someone said, we have a Savior who has done all, paid all, accomplished all, and performed all that is necessary for our salvation. And thus now, having finished his work on the cross, what was the next step? Our Lord Jesus, he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. But therein, therein, lies another very important principle. You know why? Because when we die, we first pass away, and then our head, like, drops. We saw in the movies, eh? You die, and then you have no control. Not so with Jesus. He did not give up the ghost, then bow his head because he was dead. No. He bowed his head while he was alive. As though gently placing his head on the pillow, in peace. And then he gave up the ghost. Don't miss that. He had come to do the work and the will of God, his Father. He had finished the work. And everything was now finished. Remember, it was unfinished until he went to the cross. He was now on the cross. The work was accomplished. So now, as in completion, he could bow his head and rest. And then give up the ghost. Jesus died, let me tell you, in complete control over everything that was happening to him. Even his death. Even in death he was the Lord. Remember John 10 verse 17, 18. I lay down my life. I lay down my life that I may take it again. No man take it, it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it up again. And beloved, our Lord is still in charge today. Romans 49, for to this end Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Let me close. So what does this mean for us today? What does this mean? If Christ did it all and it is finished, it means we don't have to do anything. You just have to come. You just have to come. Spurgeon said, there is nothing for God to do. It is finished. And there's nothing for you to do. It is finished. J.C. Rao, we rest our souls on a finished work if we rest them on the work of Jesus Christ the Lord. We need not fear that either sin or Satan or the law shall condemn us at that last day. You see, everything necessary to receive salvation and the forgiveness of sin has been done. Since Christ paid in full, the only thing you can do today is either to accept his offer or to reject what Christ has already done on the cross. Because we have a Savior who has done all, paid all, accomplished all, performed all, everything that is necessary for our salvation. Beloved, I plead with you, all you have to do is receive it as a gift by faith. That's what Ephesians says. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. That's point number one. Let me close with this point. If Jesus has paid it all, paid in full, tetelestai, then there is no sin that is too great for Christ to forgive. If you have a sin and you are struggling to accept God's full forgiveness, let your mind dwell on this truth. Tetelestai. It is finished. Take your pencil and you write down your sin. You name your sin. And then you write next to it. Tetelestai. T-E-T-E-L-E-S-T-A-I. Tetelestai. Paid in full. Surely this must give us the assurance, the comfort, and the peace that all our sin debt past, present, and even future, even the sins you're still going to do tomorrow, is paid in full, and there remains no sacrifice to be paid. You know the hymn, E.M. Hall, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. It doesn't matter what your sin is. It doesn't matter how bad you've been. 
It doesn't even matter how guilty you feel today. Don't let your sin keep you from God today. Every single sin, past, present, and future, has been stamped, stamped in blood and written over in full. Tetelestai. Paid in full. You name it. Anger, gossip, bitterness, lying, hatred, racism, disobedience, unfaithfulness. You name it. No sin is too big that the blood of Jesus cannot cover. No sin too big that has not been paid in full. Tete is that. If you have been touched, why don't you stand? As everyone bows their heads. I don't want to break any protocol, but if you are brave enough, you want to come stand in front, keeping apart, but come take a step out of that pew. And you come forward and you say, Lord, thank you. Paid in full. Tete lestai. Let's rededicate our lives today, this morning. Let's get rid of every single thing that ought not to be there. Let's not waste the blood of Jesus. No sin too hard. No sin too big. Step out of your row if you want to. Come down the aisle. Let's just pray for you. Father, this morning we stand ashamed. Firstly, because we have been living as if it's not finished. Not even aware that Christ has paid everything in full. Lives that are riddled with shame and guilt. Because we haven't come forward to say and acknowledge and accept this offer. Father, today I pray for anyone who does not know thee as personal Savior. We're still looking to try and do something for God when everything has already been done. We need not do anything. All that's left to do is to accept this free and wonderful gift. Oh, Father, I pray for anyone, whether be it at home, watching, in the service now, please let them accept Christ as Savior. Pray for any of us here, Lord, who have who are riddled, our lives are riddled with guilt and shame. Let us accept your offer as well. It is finished. It is paid in full. Tetelestai. And allow the blood of Jesus to take the sin away. We know that if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, Father, let us just start fresh today. A new walk with thee. Our lives stamped as it were on our foreheads. Tetelestai. Paid in full. Thank you for our service. Thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.